This is the uh, August 19th meeting of the Conway Select Board. We're being taped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later by the public and our residents. First item on the agenda, minutes for the August 5th meeting. Has they're, everybody read the minutes? They're very good. They look fine. Yeah. I have a question on the minutes. Yeah. What happened with the letter on the uh, Ashfield MassWorks application? So that would be a question directed to me? Yes. Yeah. Um, one second. So, okay, so we have, um, this goes back to, what was it, a year ago when, when this stuff came up. And the, the dam safety thing is, is, is a law that my, that remember I, we talked about this at length, it's a law that my family lives with, I really know this stuff. And We had and, discussions with Ashfield over the vulnerability program at sure. Conway and Ashfield yeah. are doing it together. And yeah. um, first of all, applying for a mass works, so, so the basis of what they're trying to fix is the tie and bond engineering report that the um, environmental agency, state environmental agency required them to do the dam safety section yep. and it downgraded their dam so that it's now one of the 100 most dangerous dams in the state, state owned, uh, yep. town owned dams in the state. It is the literal sword of Damocles hanging over our town. And um, in the, what, three or four years since that report came out, they have done zero to, uh, to comply with it. And um, applying for a grant once a year is not a plan to comply with it. And the citizens of that town are not aware of it. They've mentioned it in town meetings, I'm told, but they've never appropriated any money to deal with it. Um, there's all kinds of problems with that, that, you know, and, and so uh, me, I, I'm not no longer comfortable just signing with them a grant uh, for, for a mass works grant, and which they're never gonna get because you can't get a grant from one state agency to pay the bill that another state agency sends you. It doesn't work that way. You can't, the, the, <laughs> they're not gonna get a grant. It's going nowhere. It's just to show that they're doing something in my, that's what it looks to me. I, I hope that I'm wrong. But, and, and that's why I'm, I'm open to sitting down with them, seeing, do they have a plan? Are they ever gonna tackle any of this? They gotta start somewhere. Um, yeah, but all we're doing is giving them a letter of support. Right. We have to move so forward with a, with a grant that would be, you know, basically overseen by the state or by uh, FERCOG, and hopefully that helps them get something done. But they're using that process as to, to show the state this is what we're doing, and that's just not adequate. It's not going to work. They haven't gotten the grant three years running. They're not going to get the grant this year. I don't really support what they're doing. I, I want them to have a serious plan to start looking after the safety and welfare of the people of this town, which is their responsibility as the upstream owner. Well, well, yeah, but maybe this is the only way they see that they can get this done, with, is with a, with a mass works grant. Um, that <laughs> which they have applied for, and th that deadline is, is passed. So our letter, we, our letters doesn't mean anything right now because yeah. it's already passed. All right. So two other things, minor, but so, so this is a real hot button that every time Phil gets near this issue, he, he you know, gets upset. So, so we were going to be tied in this, in the vote uh, over whether to support their grant. So we decided to table it. So, so. It could be possible to bring it up at a future time where no, we could break that time. I understand, no, but, but that deadline's over. Right, that was the hope. And but the other issue is Murph actually really disagrees that the dam is all that dangerous. Um, he, he, so Murph, or our, our emergency, our emergency management, director? management director. Yeah. Okay. So, so and that's and the opposite view that you take. So read the report that's available on on their webs on the town website. Uh, just look up Tyne Bond Engineering Report Ashfield Dam. Read the report, that'll scare the bejesus out of you. And um, there's a reason that the state downgraded it. There's a reason that the state is now saying, whether it's annual or biannual engineering inspections, which doesn't, do, has not appeared to have taken place since, uh, as required. Um, there, there's a reason that the state is up, is alarmed about it. And it's because 
the things that are, that is a massive earthen dam that they've allowed mature trees to grow in the middle of it and the roots of which, uh, when, when there's a big flood, um, well, if the state it, that, is that thing's a ticking time bomb, and the they got to do start. They got to start doing something about it. If the state is alarmed by it, should they be willing to give them the grant? This, it's not. They don't give grants for for for, for dams in the, in this state. They give low interest loans. That's a whole separate program that they could that they would be eligible to. But you're they're, they're not going to get Mass Works grant to pay DEP required to do DEP required repairs. It's just. Um, I, I well, believe they must, it's. I they believe. Must think so. They're applying for the grant. But anyway, all right, it, it's it's done. All right, next item on the agenda. So there's no uh, there's no changes to the to the minutes at all. Uh, no, right. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept uh, the approve the minutes of uh, August fifth. Do I have second. a second? Yeah. All yes. in favor? Okay. Next item on the agenda, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $206,508. We have a payroll warrant for $96,018. And a payroll deduction warrant of $24,494. Make a motion we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Uh, a blessed August of no meetings in the past two weeks. Whoa, no worse. meetings, yeah, Phil? Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> My next God. week it all changes. It all Cinderella has to go, leaves the ball next next week. Uh huh. Okay. All right. I had a very short conservation commission meeting. Uh, mostly we talked about the shack that's on the ball field. I don't know if everyone's had a chance to see it, but through a donation to the town, they've put up a shack. The hold. I think they call it a shed. A shed. A shed. A shed. A shed. It, it, uh, it's much bigger than I actually thought it was, but and it's mostly going to hold. I'll say some stuff, but it mostly will hold all of that fencing that sort of creates the, you know, the, the, the outfield. The outfield yeah. or out, you know, the the home run. Right. The, the home run perimeter. fence. Right. The home run fence, and uh, which has to get stored, and it's very heavy, and they didn't want to carry it very far. It all makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So they'll be storing that in there plus other things. So, so and and the there was it, unfortunately because it's right near the river, they had to do much more work than they ever imagined through the conservation commission, <coughs> and then and then. Further thing, no. things because it was right on the river. Poor things. And, and so. What happened to putting it up by the parking lot where they wouldn't have had to do any of that stuff? They would have had to have carried all of the stuff along the way. It's in a much better location. They were much happier having it right, right there. So, anyway. Okay. All right. I don't want to get the wrong idea. That's. That's not your sign. Well, <laughs> okay. You can move. You move over so you can yeah. get into the camera. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. Move over. Come Never on, mind. Go on. Well, you're, you're, you're next. You're next. Oh. So. All right. Um, okay. I had two meetings since uh, the last uh, time we met. Uh, I had a Massachusetts Municipal Association Personnel and Fair Labor Policy Committee meeting. And I'm just so happy that we don't have some of the personnel <laughs> problems that some of these municipalities have. But it's quite an education, quite an education. So if we do need you know, to deal with those kinds of personnel problems, I'll have everything I need. Wonderful. Uh, I also had a Franklin County Selectments Association board meeting last week where we uh, were talking about our next educational program which will be coming up in October. Uh, and I hope everybody gets there. All right, that's all I had. Um, any public comments, ladies? No? Okay. Did you breathe? Okay. Old business. We have no old business. We have new business. Open Space Committee. Janet, you're on. What do we have? Thank you. Well, we have updates on what we've been doing. 
to open space committee, largely primarily now with the um, the South River Meadow, uh, which you all recall. I'm glad to, interestingly enough, that this mowing plan is here. Um, <clears throat> I did. Uh, we worked for a long time, starting in March of this year, and I, I worked with Jack Gates before when he was still chairman of the CONCOM. Um, they wanted to ratify and to get CONCOM approval for current use of, of the meadow uh, and the perimeters, particularly around the river. Um, we had two RDAs. One was called the Highway One, which was the mowing plan, which is going well, and uh, and a relocation of where the snow was dumped. Um, there was a finding of no impact uh, far enough from. Um, and then we had another one called the South River Meadow Maintenance and Operations Plan, which Tom may have filled you in on some. It is, this is submitted by the town. This is, and the town, uh, it got approved. The town is required to make sure in future years that the conditions are adhered to. Now, who does it get submitted to? It, it got submitted to the, um, our, our Conservation Commission. Oh, okay. A CONCOM. And it was approved. We went through the long process and back for more information. Um, and uh, uh, so related to that sort of ties into my, my other issue about town records. Um, now the CONCOM keeps records and they're, I guess, responsible for enforcement, but, and you know, w we know what's going on while we're here, but when we're not here uh, and a new highway department comes in and somebody looks at that meadow and says, well, this is an overgrown part of its mess. I, I'm afraid in future years people won't even know where the, um, the swale is. where the swale is because it's, you know, it looks pretty mild. And so um, I wanted to bring this to your attention. I did uh, email you because my printer wasn't down. We have, a, we have the, a map, basically, which shows and which was approved. And um, to then think about uh, your records and how someone will know in the future when Tom's not here or somebody wants to put in a new bench, for example. We got approval, the, our order of condition says no cement near the river if you're putting down a bench. Um, and so that's for your consideration in terms of record keeping and the flow of electronic paperwork and so forth. Um, we got approval to put in benches, uh, uh, signs and um, Benches and, and, plant, and plantings, and um, the first bench is going in shortly, we hope, of the um, donated memorial bench by Holly Hatch uh, and her family. Mm -hmm. The Hatches were, Bob, do you remember them? Uh, uh, I knew Hal Hatch. Hal yeah, Hatch, yeah. yes. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I don't know the rest of his family. But, okay, well, but Hal we Hatch didn't. Was did, active didn't in town. Hal Hatch and his wife was also. And so we, and they contributed a lot, and, and who knows, this bench is hopefully, you know, this, this may be, you know, 800 to 1,000, we have no idea. But it's gonna have a, it's tasteful, and she was here and we selected a site for it near the river. Um, and it's- and Is it stone? Uh, yes, it's coming Ashfield from- Ashfield Stone. Ashfield Stone. Right. And it is, uh, it's the first of potentially three. I had invited Bob and Phil went on this first walk way back uh, uh, Peter Deswald helped a little bit mm -hmm. with this long process of what kind of bench would look good and so forth. Um, anyway, the goal, I suggested that perhaps we could have a small um, uh, serve, uh, an honoring, a commissioning or whatever, mm. uh, the weekend of the festival, maybe that Saturday uh, before. But anyway, I think this is... Ribbon cutting. A ribbon cutting, yes. A cl I mean, this is clearly, a little dry. Right, right, right. This is clearly beyond just you know Michelle and I and mm -hmm. our couple little open space members. This is a, you know something for the town to celebrate and however man you can manage and some publicity and uh, 
I think would be nice, and mm -hmm. and then we use it as an opportunity. That agenda back. To, an opportunity to um, to perhaps solicit to get a couple of more mm -hmm. donations. Um, uh, one item up in the air still is a sign for the meadow. Uh, we don't. I, I don't have time. We don't have money for the signage um, now. We, the, um, we need the big sign that mm -hmm. says this is a public town meadow and so forth. Um, there have been talk for a long time using one of the millstone stone mm -hmm. wheels that was up and at on the that side of town and then wasn't used. And Ron says, you know, yes, there's like general agreement. It would look cool there. But he told me last time I saw him, he said it's kind of leaning up somewhere near the school of the hybrid farm. It doesn't say anything. No. So oh, is that the one? It's that was, the one that was in front of the bridge. Yes. It was the one in front of the bridge. It so was down it flat. Was kind of you know, I mean, is that worth moving or uh, anyway, something I for perhaps you all to consider. My our creativity oh, okay. is, you know, this is a, a stone it, carver to engrave it. A, mm -hmm. a stone carver to engrave it and then locate it. Now we've been working with. Um, the highway department with Ron, and they finally moved the uh, rock. the rock crusher. And I did to mm -hmm. have to speak to Tom. You know, we were glad that happened. And then he moved. You may have seen he's moved a lot of that rubble pile. Mm -hmm. But we're concerned the next one of the next steps is to have it planted with some grassy machine. Yeah, it would be good other, to other issues you have. Well, it would be good to seed it this fall. So yeah. Yeah, so this is way. Tom, can you can you do that? Uh, ask Ron to plant it with grass seed. The the new area. We can do that. You can do that. Can you can do that. I mean, Ron is. Maybe more, we, we know Ron does a great job. Again. He's very busy. I mean, I always yeah. hear he's very busy. He gets lots of requests, and I know Tom works on his priorities and so forth, and obviously it falls a bit so there, While you're talking about this, I have gotten phone calls from people saying, what are we doing down there on the meadow? Like, yeah. you know, is there a building plan? You oh. know, is there, is, are, there, are there plans that nobody in town seems to know about? I mean, and, and you know, and you guys will probably say very similar things about mm -hmm. your plans and then the rumors that will start around town <laughs> as to what's what's happening, you know, and and generally they're all good, and you know, there's I mean, there's nothing I'll say nefarious or or you know something people wouldn't like, I suspect, but you've created this what looks like the foundation for a serious building by the work that Ron did. Uh, he's it's a parking space, so and, so, and it's for yeah. snow removal. That's they are now going to store when they remove snow downtown. They're going to dispose of it up it closer above. to the road because uh -huh. it was very close to wetlands before. Right, right. So this is a, the CONCOM was pleased to have them move where they're going to put it. So for the sake of the camera, I mean, I could recommend that people watch, you know, today's, you yeah. know, select board meeting and say you can hear from the open space yes, committee nothing, yourself. Nothing um, is going to be built there, right? <laughs> So, it's but so, so it's it's so an open this, space. The snow, <laughs> right? The snow's going to get dumped there, right? And and a parking lot a par in the summer. Uh, park it. Well, yes, it's just parking for people who want to walk on the meadow. Right, right. But in the meantime, it should be planted. Down, it it so is much. important that it gets planted with a conservation grass so that all the invasives that we've worked on eliminating don't come up, and which they will do because there's. The one thing that you mentioned that I will say that I was really impressed with is Ron's regrading of the entrances to the because that when I had mentioned that to you that how unsafe that I felt personally right. that was like great and you think those was good those and, 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 those and what he better. did made it like super much more safer um, to drive down there. To drive, especially to drive, drive out, out of there. I, it's hard to get it out. It used to yeah. be pointing way in the air. You couldn't yeah. see for that like ten seconds yeah. that you were like up and like that. You couldn't see, and it was sketchy. And it's not at sketchy Excellent. anymore. Excellent. So, Excellent. so the, definitely progress yeah. is made slowly. Uh, um, on September 8th, we have a nature walk with Lori Sanders and her husband Fred, uh, who is a, uh, uh, his named Butterflies. He's a butterfly. Uh, pollinator. Thank you, a pollinator. Um, 
and this is uh, this is very exciting because, as you may remember, it was really overgrown with the invasives, and we've been sure. watching the native plants come back. Um, that is at 4 p.m. on mm -hmm. Sunday. Uh, and then we have exciting news, too. We've been working with the Connecticut River Conservancy. Mm -hmm. Actually, Kimberly Furcott right. put us in touch and recommended uh, about planting some more trees. Michelle, do you want to you can give us a Google look? Well, they're good. They, they've arranged to give us a couple of hundred um, plants. Um, at this point, mostly shrubs, they're willows and red twig dogwood. Mm -hmm. And um, those will, those are good for stabilizing banks mm -hmm. and um, being in the riparian areas along the edge where there used to be a lot of knotweed. Um, so we'll be planting 29th of September. Uh, the they have volunteers who are going to come help us plant. It's wow. on 28th. Well, yeah. well, wow. well, they're hoping. I mean, they want they, our volunteers too. Yeah, they want too. us I mean, too. They say with enough so volunteers, we'll it'll just be a couple of hours. Um, it is with the source, it's, it's going to be part of the source to see cleanup. And they, I think they will also clean up a little bit of the, the debris that's still oh, down there, you know, if we have people to help. So uh, so that's an important that we get to be part of it. Um, they, they are small. We hope to work with them for um, uh, securing some larger trees to plant in the spring. And I did call in Lori Sanders, Tom, back to to advise specifically right before, you know, we get down to this nitty gritty. Did you say the date for that? Um, I think it's a, it's a 20th, I think it's Saturday. 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 It's September 28th is a Saturday. Yeah. Right. At what time? So it's to see cleanup, I guess. I don't know yet. We will let you know. Okay. We will let you know. Um, I told them that, you know, my days of doing lots of extra bending and lots of extra planting are very limited. I have my own problems and issues, including invasive stilt grass. So maybe just a little segue to mm -hmm. Michelle could just give an update Oh, an on. update on the stilt grass? Yes. It's still there. It's still there. <laughs> but yeah. we, I would say we've, we're controlling it. It's, um, we're not going to eradicate it everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. gone in some places. Every now and then we find a new patch. I have one intern this summer, but I'm only working part-time now, so I'm the other intern free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we continue to have some yeah. issues with landowners, with a few landowners not wanting um, their property, anyone t to be on their property, and then not really understanding right. the seriousness of the issue. I happen to have it all over my interior pastures. And believe me, I mean, the pictures when you... we. They saw f pictures of forests mm -hmm. where the mat underneath, nothing else grows, and you know the wildlife is not eating it. So, and, and my, my wow. property is way inland, so it mm -hmm. gets square. Yeah, it does get off the yeah. road right now. You know, we're working on the roads because that's the vector for spreading mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. sure. um, I think increased cooperation from the highway department would be helpful in that I requested they might not mow so low in the areas where I give them a map every year of what where still grass has ever grown because the seed lasts 10 years it's an annual a lot of seed and when they mow so low that they're dragging their equipment through the dirt it's spreading it and I'm watching it creep down the roadside so mm -hmm. More help in that department would be useful if we, want, if we don't want it to keep spreading. Yeah, it, sure. it has been a problem, uh -huh. I know, for Ron sometimes. It's hard. They, you know, the, the road edges are not level, and, yeah, and sure. um, you know, people get tired. And, and, and where um, it's possible, it would be And the hard. plows are spreading it. As yeah, the plows. plows no, you know, it's funny because it gets mixed in. The seed gets mixed in with gravel, washes down yeah. in the road. When they go plowing and it sprays up the side, it, it, Bob knows because it's on one of his banks. But it's it's doing pretty well there. There was very little there this year. Very grass little. be gone. That works. It works well. Um. Well, okay. That's um. That's, I don't know if you've got any comments, Tom, or thoughts, or a system that I'm not aware of for like making sure, because these, the findings from the CONCOM, you know, are part of 
pound records. The order of mm -hmm. conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So can I say just a yes. bit about that? Um, so I mean, what the Concon goal was was that. The Open Space Committee came to them with a lot of work done. We talked about it, but it wasn't documented anywhere. And so in the future, when to maintain this property, we wanted to try to get the thoughts behind why this property is the way it is written down somewhere. So so it's, it was included yeah. in the order of conditions so we have, that they write down. We have this long, and I think I just yeah. maybe emailed this to you again, Tom, this the maintenance and operation plan. Mm -hmm. You know, and it says that the that the floodplain area, you know, is to yeah. Yeah, yeah. be mowed only as needed and so forth. Um, so and, that's, and the kind of experts that should yeah, be consulted yes, yeah. Right. for future changes or future work that not necessarily say call Laurie Sanders but, right. but right. to the, say the call nat you know and yeah. Yeah. A, a naturalist so, you know mm -hmm. experts at the time you yeah. know mm -hmm. yeah. unless we happen to have a, a biology professor on the committee you know mm -hmm. sure um, so that's yeah if you can leave an extra hard copy of that for me that would be helpful yes okay yeah. we'll do we'll do um, um, and it may be that the highway department is the proper body to do that, but the, I think we need a general policy for, for what they do that's not highway work. And it, it may be that, it, you know, as, open, as an open space project, that it, that it come out of open space funding that's available to us now, that those, that, well, that, we've been that paying, big we've pot been, of money. We've been paying for the, 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 yeah. the path. So the grass seed and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. so, uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, related to that, I've, I've kind of been wondering and sort of concerned about where the town records are. I'm, I'm going to also talk about the community preservation. I'll just give you an example. I went to the town website to look up the bylaw for the community preservation committee, which mm -hmm. I worked on a lot, you know, years ago, and it's there. And I remember Ginny used to have, there used to be a link to the bylaws, and well, in my 10 minutes, I could not find it. I mean, I also couldn't find the agenda, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> but, but like, to me, all these records are like a library. They should be. Mm -hmm. Related is how much, why do we have to come in and put, fill up all these notebooks of paper uh, when uh, they've all start and are sent around electronically. And so, it seems in the digital age, the filing and location of where, you know, where, let's go back and even look at our own records from XYZ years ago, uh, and and I, I think people should be able to find them, mm -hmm. and um, it, it may yeah. take a master's degree in library science electronically. Uh, I mean, or maybe no, you have standards. No, but it does take being a town clerk. Was the stand the standards, appropriate right? Appropriate person to uh, direct right. that that comment to because that's her, her yes. bailiwick, and, and and I think you might find a very sympathetic ear. Well, I understand. Oh, okay, I understand that, and. And uh, you know it's an elected position. Um, however, I, th I mean, I hope that you would agree it's an important issue. Oh, absolutely. And and I'm not going to volunteer my time to try to execute or develop a plan for this. And but I hope you will. Mm -hmm. Again, that is the town well, clerk's bailiwick, and, and I'm happy to and and, and tell and, her that you have. That you're in favor. Of well, I okay. Tell her that I'm <laughs> in favor of it. It's also the solution to your continuity through generational change uh, uh, dilemma is to have it digital so that people can. And and and, and therefore, down then I would ask the, the select the board to consider whether this is also important. And if it's important to you, then then perhaps you could address it. Well, I think it's important to everybody in town. Yeah, okay. Sure. Well, so yeah. it's not just Janet suggesting something oh, not, to the town not, clerk, which oh, is what I heard not Tom not say. No. Well, <laughs> if, if it's a recommendation from the Open Space Committee, I'm telling you the best place for that recommendation to be made. Okay, no, this is this yes. actual yeah. one is not a recommendation from the Open Space Committee. This is a recommendation <laughs> from me as a longtime user and concerned citizens about having logical access and sure. s safe uh, safeguarding and then and then mm -hmm. eliminating the need for all the paper. This, this is also an issue with all the major, like with our schools that have been generations and generations of files, many of which they have to keep for many years. 
and the storage just whatever and it's just you if you did but the the backlog of things to digitize and the reluctance to hire someone specifically to do that mm -hmm. um yeah the, the way you start with that is by making sure you're digitizing things presently currently yes. in the moment right and, and where and where they are nip, and have, nip away at know, the I backlogs as you can people will but, be happy to to comply and participate if they're given you know the clear clear directions but you know we almost built Lee maybe you remember the the historical commission mm -hmm. wanted a hundred thousand dollars or something a new building, building yeah. for building. for yeah. keeping records yeah. and I just controlled and I just had to think well how many of them are duplicate copies of minutes mm -hmm. of, uh, that people have had and mm -hmm. accumulated okay sure. yeah. um, the third my, the third issue is uh, me as an individual is the uh, the situation with some of our committees not having enough members mm -hmm. and the community preservation committee in particular now that committee you may remember i mean i was worked on for years and and i think we all agree and the townspeople approved even increasing the rate now there's more money okay um but the the committee has has like seven members and um several of them are appointed by uh, well, the Historical Commission, um, the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. the Council on Aging, and the Recreation Committee. And I know you could just hear it at town meeting that they have trouble meeting. They don't have enough members. Um, I don't know that they can get a quorum. That that those appointees from those committees are probably vacant, and. What I, and I'm going to ask the select board to, to help revitalize that committee. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the chair, the sort of acting chair, Dusty, told me. I think he got reappointed, but he said I'm happy if somebody else, you know, to take the lead. And from my own experience, it's not tons of times at time, and it's seasonal. Mm -hmm. But for an act, a, a, there's a planning board representative. For an active member of those committees, like planning board and CONCOM meets twice twice a month, and then to throw in, and then they have you know papers and stuff to do, and then to throw in another committee mm -hmm. um, that that requires some work and a lot of knowledge to learn how to do it is was you know it would just there would be months oh you know I brought it up at the CONCOM again nobody has time or you know somebody was on for a while and they left. What we did was have an ad hoc member um, of, for example, the CONCOM, um, uh, Ann Borton, served, served for a long time as chair of the CONCOM, and then uh, none of the current members wanted to devote that additional time, and they, she was a, a, an auxiliary or ad hoc or something member of the con come and I think you're gonna have to do the same with the planning board and and maybe somebody else for the age or the housing housing I don't know what the status of the housing mm -hmm. is you know it uh, uh, that's another important committee that that I hope is revitalized and then can send a representative to so uh, that uh, I I believe that takes leadership you know mm -hmm. Sure. And and recruitment and Absolutely. helping people, you know, by the letter of the law, you're not supposed to. It says a member of the planning board. I mean, this is designed for cities who have lots of staff mm -hmm. or something. You know, it's not designed for overworked volunteers when we, yeah. Yeah. when we, because right. otherwise, you know, that's going to be. In, we we have a problem trouble. with many of the committees right. getting people to serve. Right. That's you know. And I, I, I had heard similar con uh, concerns from other people about the CPA committee, um, and I did look into it within the past month where I spoke with several people on that committee and um, was assured that although it is a bit glitchy, uh, that if there is a proposal, they will be and they will, they are 
and they have enough members. They are to sufficiently meet? constituted to be able to deal with it. That the they one of their issues is nobody's put in a proposal for over a year. Mm -hmm. well, and I, I, I believe I they will be having. Some and I know I know there's going to be at least two coming up. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things that we did was to periodically announce it. I always had announcements in the visitor, and that the mm -hmm. short form is here, and call yeah. us if you've got any ideas, and and then reported on, you know, what we've done and the status of the of the funds. Sure. You know, to keep yeah. that. Alive, and we put put up signs uh, for the projects that were completed. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. okay. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. And we hope to see you at one of our events uh, or more than one. Looking forward to it. Good. I'm there every day. Okay. I'm at good. Meadow every day. Good. Good. Either in the morning or in the evening. With two little doggies. Oh, good, good. Well, you can That's do a little I hope you're picking up after yourself. Oh, picking up yes, after people the have dogs. been, I gotta say, people have been really good. I hardly but see any up problems your dogs out there. Yes. It's a little, um, oh, yeah, every now and then I try to. I or just get really small dogs and you can't even be sure where they ever live. <laughs> oh, okay. Can you be sure to give me anything that you yes. have or want yes. for the dedication? Oh, the dedication. Wow. Well, you know, I don't. I mean, it was we just don't have like the about, bench up yet. About where to put the bench. And, it, you know. Ladies. Is it our job to do a dedication and memorial? Just well, well we're it's too simple to plan it because it's somebody time. with yeah. history background and a good writer. There you, you go, you. Phil. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I thought ladies. you were describing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. In. Thank you. Okay, next Can item on the agenda. No, you're in there. No, I've got your, your name on there. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Next item on the agenda. No, that's Friends right. of Conway, ladies. You have an update for us? I'm sorry? Do you have an update for us? We do. And uh, just informational. Okay. Actually, I think originally at Bob's suggestion, and we're happy to be here. Um, the Friends of Conway uh, moves forward at a little more than glacial speed. Um, we've got inch warm, <laughs> something like that, <laughs> something like that. Um, we have three projects going on at the moment, and all of them are in their initial stages. But let, let us tell you about them, and love mm -hmm. to hear your comments. Um, we have pollinators, uh, pollinator meadow, looking as though it's going to happen. The Audubon Society is working with us. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, in their field in 116. It, nothing is simple, but, <laughs> but they seem to be very happy to be doing this. And we have had, um, uh, we've had Tom Sullivan, who is, his one-man company is called Pollinators Welcome. It's well known, he did all of the Greenfield public uh, pollinator fields. He's worked with me for many years. Uh, he's just a universally good guy. Mm -hmm. and Bee expert. That's right. Mm -hmm. Bees and Honey. flowers and yeah, pollinators. Well, right. any pollinators. Butterflies. And he's been since he's a, a graduate, I think in '07 of uh, Conway School, and has been working on this ever since. Mm -hmm. And what a struggle it was to begin with, and now he's the most popular man in the va valley, <laughs> but mm -hmm. <laughs> with the pollinator issues coming to the fore. Anyway. And he's given us uh, 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 an estimate, 9000 and change, mm -hmm. for a three-year project. To develop a, approximately a half acre, five, which the acres, yeah. gentleman from Audubon more or less laid out. And um, so, lots of houses, yeah. Right. Uh, so this is, this is what I was referring to earlier when I said people are calling me up worried about what the Open Space Committee is doing and I'm sure that people are going to be calling saying, you know, right. has, is somebody getting ready to build something or oh, what gosh, are you yes, doing, yes. you know, no, no, no. on the How Alice should field. we communicate? And Can we put this I, on the town? It's not a town. The visitor would be great. The visitor is the but best yeah. place. The, the yeah. visitor, if it exists. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, it does. It does. It does. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. Is there a new yeah. editor? I don't know. Marcus is still doing it. Marcus, Marcus is doing it. He's ends one that he's December won. one. Ooh. Mm. He said he'd be do it for a year. He's done it for six years. Yeah. And now um, December one is the drop it's dead date. Voted. So, just just saying. But yeah. <laughs> of course we can do that. 
Then, uh, Lee, did you want to, you, you, you've been talking to Denise Dwelly. Well, yes, yes, we have a number of people interested in helping out with that. Some who are already well educated about this topic yeah. and uh, working oh, on their own and their own properties. And so mm -hmm. it's pretty exciting. Um, we need to find a point person. We need to talk to, to Ron Boyden first, of course, because that is a field that he uh, mows. But it, according to the Audubon, it's a somewhat damp area that's not really appropriate for heavy equipment. Well, that 5.7 acres yes. at the bottom, yes. It was yes. it was wet even during the drought. Right, so. right. So hopefully that will not yeah. uh, cause problems. We need mm -hmm. to talk to him first. Um, uh, secondly, we have a project going with the Council on Aging, and it was instigated by Ken Lumet, by Ken Lumet to develop communications networks in a number of different neighborhoods around town so that those who perhaps are senior, perhaps live alone, perhaps have any kind of an issue that would make them more vulnerable to, diff to disasters, whatever it be, would have someone in the neighborhood whom they contact to reach the town. Mm -hmm. And that person could also keep the people in that neighborhood through a telephone tree. Um, aware and up-to-date with anything that's going on. There's also the probability of developing a, a disaster uh, box in which people would be able to, they would be, have what they need to ma manage for several days at least mm -hmm. until someone could get in there if that was necessary. We can't do prescription medicine certainly, but there are a number of things that can be provided and so also a list of how to handle certain situations. Um, good advice. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's underway. Pat Lynch is fantastic with this one. Yep. Yep. As uh, and we've um, worked out a number of different neighborhoods that have oh ten or a dozen people whom we know right off hand might be interested in this. Mm -hmm. Then the third project isn't underway yet. It's in the talking. No, but situation. Jimmy, this is Jimmy Recor's uh, suggestion, and he's interested in, he wants to be the point man, and I think we want him to be, yeah. um, kind of the structure of this Friends of Conway as it's developing is uh, finding a project, finding funding for it, and finding a team captain. And handing it over. Not right? ourselves, but, yeah. let, you know, but uh, just kind of, and we want to keep in touch with the the town so that mm. uh, what Jimmy has in, in mind and he wrote me and I, I'm just going to read it to you he he said he's got some personal issues that he has to family issues that he has to deal with first but we're in he said he want, needs to talk to Bob Baker uh, he needs to talk to the District 9 warden the concept is to open up uh, old logging roads so that if there's a wildfire, if there's a fire, uh, equipment can get in. I trust Jimmy to know that some of them are impassable to any equipment and of course need to decide which old roads, and this is Jimmy's list, get landowners permission, decide who does the clearing, and uh, gate the roads. He's very concerned that once they're attractive and open, people with motorcycles or whatever. So I, I think it just re needs posting as required. Mm. Uh, he thinks maybe a gate too that's only open to the fire department or something like that. Uh, and as far as funding, we're going to be one of the uh, people applying to the CPA for the pollinator project. Mm -hmm. um, well, that makes three applications I know of then. Gosh. Yeah. Good. Isn't that great? Well, yeah. uh, different, different neck of the woods all together, though. I think that's you're, you're all alone in the open space thing, so as far as I know. Great. Yeah, things are rolling. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, on the roads, um, I think we will get some USDA help. I, I can't say that for sure. I made a false start 
thinking that we needed the money for the pollinators, mm -hmm. and then I went, so. But um, maybe some of you know Jamie Newfield uh, at the USDA. He helped me a lot, and his office helped me a lot after the tornado. Uh, you know, in our case, we got a $7,500 grant mm -hmm. through them. An another advantage. We had to pay part of it, but we, but that was just. Uh, uh, Could some of those logging roads be on state land, or this? I'm sure. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, the wildfire does not right. respect mm -hmm. boundaries mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any more than yeah. pollinators do. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Another aspect of this particular project is that we have many, many more people out and about hiking on these, yeah. uh, you know, everywhere, yeah. and that this would enable emergency vehicles to get out if someone is hurt. It mm -hmm. might help, help in that regard. Yep. So, um, there are, that, that, this one, is, that one is absolutely <laughs> still in the birthing pain stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, except Jimmy's done a lot of thinking yeah, he about has. it. He and has. he runs everywhere. He, he's always in the woods. Yeah. When he's mm -hmm. not coaching somebody. Mm -hmm. He's a very busy guy. But yeah. Yeah. So anyway. this is what our newest citizens organization is up to. Good. Well, yeah. sounds like you're making some great progress. Well, I'm, I'm very happy. I that's mean, good. Lee has a job that's demanding more time now because of the conversion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Training you well. We're getting that. into it. That'll be oh, the camera conversion. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He knows all about it. And I'm... Um, Gee, I'm trying to get the same my age set. on television, but let's say <laughs> I'm aging out, and <laughs> and I can do a lot of this uh, in between, uh, you know, down on my knees in the rice field and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I think this sort of wheel and spoke structure is going to work for us. Mm -hmm. um, the central obligation is to find the money and to choose the projects. Mm -hmm. And then the management would be really handed over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to yeah. responsible people. <coughs> we, we would just help. You know, if, if anyone has a good, worthy, you know, worthwhile project yeah. that they think might fall under yeah. this, under this and group, And by talking please. about it, yeah. And people do watch the yeah. FGAD yeah, videos. Please, please let us know. Hi there. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it, it'll cause more ideas. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yes. Yep. Anyway, but I'm. I think the three for the next few months, the three are all we can handle. Mm -hmm. uh, but every one of them is one step in front of the other. Nothing mm -hmm. flashy. Yeah. But solid, so far as I can tell. Yep. That sounds great, Sue. Lee, thanks for coming in. That yeah, would be our town all. motto, yeah. nothing flashy but solid. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, a good one. <laughs> I, how, how about a can-do approach to our uncertain future? All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, so much. I, I yeah. think it's pretty amazing, these two projects, or these two people have come in to talk about what they're working on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you know, not terrible, you know, they're not talking about an oil spill or they're not talking no. about, you know, yep. terrible things. They're talking about good things. Geese honking or yep. dogs barking. So, all so that. do we understand that the Selleck Court's happy with what we're doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thanks, very sure. good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Very, very happy, actually. Very impressed. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next Thanks. item is the uh, letter regarding low-income solar programs to the governor and legislature, which we're going to do online. Well, that, that's it's the easiest way to do it. The, putting it in letter form is awkward because it came from a web form that would be sent simultaneously to the governor and legislators, mm -hmm. and there are bits in here for both the executive and the legislative mm -hmm. branch, and. I did it this way because that's the traditional way that the select board communicates. And it does get our town logo. Um, the same letter, but, the same letter to widely varying parties, and it kind of shows. Yeah. And because that's the way it was constructed, so I would oh rather goodness. have your blessing to submit the web form. Um, I'm the governor. I'm like, can't they just make a letter just for me? I'm the governor for crying out loud. I gotta oh. share the same letter with the state representatives. Come on. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we uh, allow Tom to uh, get online and uh, basically 
put in whatever he has to out of this. So this would it still thing. come from the board or? Would yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. fill it out as coming from, okay. from the town. Yeah. I'll yeah. second that yeah. motion. Okay, can all you, in favor. You, uh, yes. And, okay. and the original link to the original web form is in the email that I sent out on okay. Thursday afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Can this get up on, on the uh, town website? I, I thought the letter was excellent. Um, I mean, the idea is how to find a way, ways to increase the amount of low-income solar, you know, to make solar available for especially people in low-income communities, mm -hmm. which sure. just is Without objection. not available today. I'll, uh, I'll put the, uh, the actual web letter. That'd be great. Because that's what we'll actually be submitting. Great. Thank you, Tom. Sure. All right, next item on the agenda, the Franklin Regional... Uh, Franklin County Regional Kennel. Okay, we do this every year. We just sign the contract with the uh, the sheriff's office. To, uh, Is there no other option? No, there aren't mm -hmm. any other options. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. We could um, pay to construct a kennel and um, pay somebody to manage it, which our animal control officer is not. Um, he's not interested in doing. No, that he's kind. already. He's already. We do, we just had to uh, up this stipend for a training and whatnot. It's called regionalization of services. That's what we're doing here. Yeah. Because we can't do it on our own. Make a motion that we sign the letter to the sheriff. Um, it's the agreement by and between the Franklin County Sheriff's Office and the Town of Conway regarding the regional dog control services. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Reluctantly. You're not in favor. Uh, no, I don't, I don't like that he makes a deputy sheriff run it, and I, I don't think, I think the director should be not, not affiliate, not, not a direct uh, underling of his that has to always, but it's not the way to run. Well, that's the way it's been do done for years, and that's the, <laughs> the way that it's most efficient at this point in time. And so. it is our animal control officer's wife. And, well, <laughs> none of that. Uh, the fact that he's the only so, show in town makes, uh, makes yeah. me say yes. But <laughs> yeah. if there was an alternative, I would go in that direction. There aren't many alternatives, mm. Phil. Yeah, private boarding would be much more expensive. We had to do that on our own. You know what it would cost? And yeah, if we actually performed the service on our own, we'd have to have facilities and food and medical care and all kinds of things. So, one stop shop is how I look at it. Have we ever had a dog that was declared dangerous and we needed him to, them to do that? It's not just for dangerous dogs, it would be for strays, strays. For, for any, any dog that we uh, need to deal with. Okay, any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance, Tom? Uh, I don't have any. Okay, do you have your update? You'll love this one. We will? Yeah. Very short, I think. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Two bits of committee news. Yeah, it has been a quiet week in like oh, over the I like that, Tom. I like um, that. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, Dave Barton has resigned his position as associate member of the planning board to which he was appointed by the select board when the planning board did not have a full complement of members as they now have full membership. Dave is bowing out. Sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. And Andrea Bodwin yeah. has officially resigned from the finance committee. If anyone believes they are a good fit for the committee or anyone knows anybody who they believe is a good fit for the committee, I have urged them to contact moderator Nick Filler, who appoints the Finance Committee. Okay. So just, just, um, Dave has been on committees and for generations and generations of whatever. Is there, is there like a lifetime kind of a thing? I mean, lifetime I achievement? Well, kind of, I don't know, but for somebody that's volunteered for 50 years in the town and is now bowing out of town government and town committees. Oh, he's still, he's still involved. Oh, yeah. No, is he's he still involved? He's yeah. chair of the Personnel Committee. Yeah. Um, so not. Right. Yeah, we will. I'm. I, right. I am sure we will do something. Uh, All right. Good. When he when he does that. Um, 
Thank you, and, Tom. And there, there is an extra bit of news that I have left for the mail. Yes. Um, but in, uh, we have concerns of the selectmen. Do we have concerns of the selectmen? No, we don't. Okay, that's no. good. Okay, in the mail, um, we received um, Jason Silverman's a resignation as uh, a member of the Agricultural Commission. And as you know, um, Jason was the chair. And apparently, no one else has stepped up to be the chair of that committee. So, so that um, leaves, um, as I had thought and confirmed with town council, um, as you may know, um, in the absence of a uh, committee or board with with uh, specified duties, which uh, the Agricultural Commission is set up by a town bylaw. Uh, in the absence of the existence of that board or committee, their duties devolve to the select board. This means that the select board is now charged with the hearing under the Agricultural Commission, so meeting as the Agricultural Commission, Let's schedule it. to review the, uh, the complaint. Well, you know, I, I, when I spoke to Jason about you know, when he was still chair, um, I suggested that I be a, a neutral and non-biased third party to talk to the two. And apparently Mr. Burt was not happy with that alternative. So well, he didn't say no. He did say that he didn't know you and he didn't know whether you were unbiased. <laughs> Well, I, I, made, I made it clear to Jason, yeah. and Jason made it clear to him, so Jason told me, yeah. I would just be act as a private citizen to see if I could talk to yeah. the two of them. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. You know. um, so, so it looks as though you're, you'll all be acting as the select board to uh, hear the issue. Well, now. and if he wasn't happy with a neutral arbitrator, um, I'm not sure he's going to be happy with the select board. Well, this is this is how it happened. This is the process, and I think oh, I know he it's will the be, process. I think in one way he'll be satisfied, whichever way he, it goes. He just wants to get through the process. So that's think, a noble. That's actually a noble goal, and we should accommodate him in that goal. Well, we have we have to accommodate. We're balanced. Yes, yes. yes. The sooner the better, I say. Yes. So I will uh, work to get that scheduled. Great. Yep. Um, it might but be. he's the one that's been pushing it off. So I, I know that you're yeah, saying we, it would be great. We were we were originally yeah. scheduled for a meeting back in yes. June. Yes. To do this, yeah. or maybe it would, maybe it was July. No, it was June. I think it was the end of June. I believe so. The end and then that got canceled because somebody could make it. Blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah. And then. Yeah. yeah. So he's good to get anyway. it done. Yes. So and. Um, I would bet that it would be probably it would probably be better to do it on a night other than the regular yes. select board Absol meeting. Absolutely, night. yes. So I'll, uh, I'll across the street instead of here. Could be, <laughs> could be. Um, I, depending on the evening, there might be people meeting over there or over here. So I'll, I'll, I'll if I can, I'll schedule it over there if you like. Yeah, let, let's see what we can put on the agenda for a separate meeting just for that. Yeah. Um, and we don't have this other meeting we were supposed to have on Thursday night. Yeah. No idea when that might be. Uh, yeah. Not yet, no. Okay. So our next scheduled meeting would be for the 3rd, but I'd like to push that off to the 4th. Does Ooh. anybody have a problem with that? Hold on a second. That's Wednesday the 4th. Wednesday the 4th. So uh, this is after, right after yeah. Labor Day. Yeah. The... Um, it, it's a little bit of a. It's a little bit of a squeeze because that's that's um, you wouldn't be approving the payroll until after we've actually cut the checks. Um, well, so your warrant your warrants wouldn't be signed. You did it on the third. The warrants aren't signed until that night anyway. Right. Right, but the checks don't get cut till Wednesday. All right, I, I, but, uh, I don't see. I don't see. The so um, we can always we can uh, always correct any any problems the next time. I don't think we've ever had a problem with the payroll warrant. But, yeah, uh, that'll be fine. Any chance uh, you can do that at five o'clock instead of six o'clock? You want to do five o'clock on the fourth? Yes. 
Can you do five o'clock? Yeah. Okay, Thank let's you. do five o'clock. Thank you. Okay. Is That's that good? great. <laughs> that is, That's great. great. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else to come before the board? No. Complete silence. Okay. I'll I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Yes. Yes. Aye. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.